humans naturally look to the left-hand side of someone's face to read their mood, as that's where we display our emotions. Dogs are one of the few other species that have picked up on this, and they also do it to tell how we're feeling. Who can resist a dog when it's trying to cheer you up? For some people, this irresistible affection has transformed their lives. Navy officer Alan Parton suffered a severe head injury while on active duty in the Gulf War. It left him confined to a wheelchair, unable to talk, and he lost half of his life's memories. You know, I can't remember my children's first steps, their first days at school, they're being born, and I was there for all those occasions, but sadly, those are memories robbed to me. But more than this, Alan didn't even recognize his children. He had no idea who the lady was that he had apparently married. And he lost the ability to feel any emotion. I had two attempts of suicide in rehabilitation because I'd lost my past, I'd lost my future, and, and I'm really in a psychologically bad place as well as physically. But that all changed with a chance encounter with a dog named Endel, who was failing his training to be an assistance dog and needed a home. At the time, there was this one-year-old Labrador up there that had health problems and a huge attitude problem. And bless him, you know, uh, he, he saw something on the floor by my wheelchair, trotted across the training centre, picked it up and put it in my lap. Well, he didn't get a reaction, he didn't get a treat, he didn't get acknowledged. And this really hacked him off. I mean, this was a dog that didn't do anything for anyone and he'd done it for me. And he wanted a treat, a reward, praise, anything. And he got the stone wall. And then he trotted over to the mock-up supermarket and took a tin off the shelf, brought it back and put it in my lap. Didn't get a reaction. To cut a long story short, I was disappearing under a mound of stuff. And just before I completely disappeared, the brain switched on and I smiled for the first time in a long time. And it was the start of our relationship. Hendel became his 24-hour companion, aiding with every practical aspect of his life. He even helped Alan reconnect with his family. And in 2002, Alan remarried his wife with Hendel as his best man. But this dog had to show his true devotion when in the dead of night, Alan and Endel were both hit by a car. But though I was knocked unconscious out of the wheelchair and Endel had been stunned by the vehicle as well, he got up, pulled me into the recovery position, he retrieved his blanket from under my wheelchair and covered me with it, and in the dark he found my mobile phone which had jettisoned off in the impact, and he brought it to my face, and then he made the brave decision to limp off and go to a nearby hotel and raise the alarm. And for that, he won the Victoria Cross for animal bravery. That dog had saved my life, my marriage, and brought me back to my children. No one could have predicted the life-changing impact that Endel would have had on Alan's family. It was a remarkable bond and an incredible life, but inevitably age caught up with Endel. I'd had a lovely evening with Endel at home, knowing the vet was coming the next day. Uh, I was able to tell him how much I loved him, you know, what he'd done for me. Uh, yeah, it was, it was quite an emotional evening. And the final gift he gave me was that gift of sadness. I didn't know that emotion, but that day Endel, you know, left me, you know, put to sleep in my lap, was the day that my heart broke and I, and I cried, yeah. But there was a little guy in the corner who was there with a hanky in his mouth to wipe away the tears. He'd been nurturing alongside Endel for a year, and that day he picked up the baton and ran with it. Good lad. Good boy. Some people will come up to me in the street and they say oh, they wish they had a dog as clever as Endel or EJ is, and, and I think they have. They just haven't opened their minds and hearts.